Hello, welcome to this week's vlog. Something a little bit different this week because I've mentioned this before, but summer for me, landscape photography is, doesn't really float my boat to be honest, it's quite difficult. You have to get up incredibly early, but even if you do, sunrises so kind of quick um, you can get ideal conditions i know some of the 7.1 guys had a great time up in northumberland but for me i found it really tough so i normally go to drone photography and i've done a video on that or i go to infrared and i've done a video on that but something that i've wanted to do for a long long time is macro photography I don't know whether you've seen the pictures of those dragonflies or insects or damselflies covered in dew uh, early in the morning. Absolutely beautiful. I would put one on the screen, but I've never shot one. So that's going to be the quest. Now, having watched a few videos online, I thought I'd give it a try. So the first thing that I did, now as you know, I'm a Nikon Z shooter, really happy with that system. It works brilliantly for landscapes. Um, the first thing that I did was bought a pair of, or a set of extension tubes. Now the extension tubes, what they do is you put them between your lens and your camera and they extend the focusing point so that you can focus a lot, lot closer in and everything is much more magnified, which actually was only 50, 60 pounds. So it was a really cheap way to do it. The problem that I had though, is that I was using uh, my 24 to 200 zoom lens. And when you put an extension tube in between that, that aperture then goes up a little bit more. And it was so, so dark in the viewfinder and in on the back of the screen, I couldn't even see to focus. Now the Z7 II, the focusing isn't the best. I think you need a Z8 or a Z9 for that. So I decided that the extension tubes, I mean, let me first of all say that I'm trying to hand hold these. And you'll see why in a minute. I'm not using a tripod because I'm photographing insects that are gonna move around. Okay, so I wanna go handheld, I wanna go light. Um, and extension tubes with the Nikon system, just too dark. So the next thought, maybe I need something with better focusing, maybe a Z8 expensive though that would be maybe that would do it but actually i think it's actually the fact that it's so dark in the viewfinder and on the on this the sensor that i don't think that would make a lot of difference um z8 maybe for landscapes but certainly i don't think it's going to work for that solution so what i did next i sent the extension tubes back they were vitro lux or something they're very cheap i sent them back to amazon and i bought this and this is a Sigma 105 DG macro 2.8 HSM the thought was a 2.8 lens obviously it's a lot brighter I haven't got to put an extension tube in between this to make it magnified enough 105 mil it's got stabilization on it um, a pretty good solution to be fair problem though with macro photography is that the depth of field is incredibly shadow shallow so if i use my reflector here let me show you so if i'm photographing this the depth of field is going to be that shallow so what you can either do is stand further away which means the depth of field is probably about that much or i can stop down the aperture so I go from f8 to f16 or something like that, f22, but even then it's still only about that much. Still not very much. And the closer in you get, the worse that gets. And to get those really, really good, excellent macro pictures of the micro world, which I want to get, you need to get in really, really close. And the closer you get in, the less, the thinner the depth of field is. So what can we do about that? Well, what we can do nowadays is we can focus stack and you've seen me focus stack stuff before uh, i'll go through that with you next week show you how to do that uh, but focus stacking means that you can shoot um, a picture so let's say the camera is the is the thing we're trying to photograph you can photograph a picture there 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 and then what you can do is you can blend those exposures 
together to get one image that is perfectly sharp across, which is a great idea. Now, hand holding this first of all, I'll, I'll talk to you about this in a second. Hand holding first of all with this camera is not easy because it's quite heavy now, this rig, especially with a flash gun on. Flash gun on. Um, but that would be okay if we had focus stacking on the Z7. And what I've discovered is that we have got focus stacking, but unfortunately with this, it's impossible to do it handheld because what you have to do is you have to get your thing in focus, which again, that much movement throws it out of focus. I then have to press the menu button. I then have to press focus stacking start. The screen is completely black this screen so I can't see what on earth it is on photographing it will then do a series of pictures and put them together which is great but I can't see hand holding it how on earth I'm going to do that now I could use a tripod that's the obvious thing but I've already said that moving a tripod about moving branches moving bugs flying off not really something I want to do um, lighting by the way I was really happy with I'll put some pictures here now of this caterpillar that I did because that's fairly stationary uh, and a spider which again is fairly stationary and this is a Godox V uh, Godox V1 flash which I bought years ago and this is a diffuser which I've been working on so you can see it's already got a, a few diffuser on this Godox and this just sits over the lens like so um, it just about fits if you push it on and that kind of diffuses it but the other problem with this is it's kind of doing that a bit. So the kind of method handheld is to do that, to do that. And what I've been trying to do focus stacking is literally going motor drive blah, 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 and then leaning forward, which kind of works, but again, kind of doesn't. So went back, produced some photographs, had a think, and I came up with a rather controversial as a landscape photographer solution which I'll share with you now because I bought this. This is an Olympus camera now called OM Systems. Got another Golex flash on the, on the top and I'll talk to you about this. This is uh, an Olympus OM hyphen D space E hyphen M1 X and it's a beautiful thing. I'll show you the back of it. On the front, we've got so the screen tucks over, and I'll talk to you about the features in a minute. And what we're using with this, this is the Olympus 60 water. I'll turn it this way so you can see the focusing. A 60 mil macro lens, um, custom built. It's the size, look at the size of my hand. Look how small it is, absolutely tiny. So let me talk to you about why I bought this. So why an Olympus? Well, that's really very straightforward. First of all, um, I bought this second hand. This doesn't actually apply to this particular camera because they are very light. This one, the EM1X, is actually quite heavy because it's got a built-in motor drive. Um, but I bought it because I want to, I wanted to get something that was really kind of rugged. And um, I've been worrying a little bit about when I go to Lofoten about things um, freezing and not working. because I don't want to end up in Lofoten in February and find that I've got um, no cameras. I need a backup body anyway. So I decided this, this all kind of worked in, I've got a, a body that it's got some benefits for macro photography. It's, it's got better, a load better water focusing than the Z7. So I've got a few portrait jobs coming up or a few commercial jobs which involve photographing people where this is gonna be superb. Um, it's a lighter setup. It means I can hand hold it. Um, and also the Olympus system I've used before and absolutely loved it. But the brilliant thing about this and one of the features that it's got is live focus stacking and focus bracketing. And what happens with that is you focus up on the, on the closest point and you can either focus, auto, so what I've been doing is auto-focusing, adjusting 
quickly by manually changing this and manually focusing. You find the closest point, you press the button and it will fire off a load of flashes and it moves the focusing point. And the brilliant thing about it is you can see it all in the back of the screen. You have, everything doesn't go dark. You can, and you can see when the focus has got to outside the creature that you're doing and you just turn it off. I mean, it's absolutely amazing. Everything done handhold. I've got a release button here and an auto focus button at the top. I've also got one here. Uh, sorry, I've also got one here and an auto focus button there. So it's got everything that I need. The screen is big. The good thing about this, the screen flips out. So we can have a, have a screen like that. Um, so if I'm doing it this way, I've got a screen that flips. If I'm going landscape. If I'm looking down on an insect, I can flip the screen up towards me so I can see. Um, the screen's brilliant. Focus stacking, focus bracketing is brilliant. So many great things on this camera that I need to talk to you about as to why I really like it. So the current setup is Olympus camera, 60mm dedicated macro lens, and because this is a micro two-thirds system, the equivalent on the Z7 would be 120 millimeters. Um, the macro is one to one, but again, on the Nikon system, on a full frame sensor, that's actually two to one, which is absolutely perfect. It's got some really, this lens is really good. It's got some quick um, buttons that you can just turn it so that it focuses straight to one to one, lock the camera in, get it, get the front bit in focus, hit the button, and away we go. Now, this flash is a Godox, it's a V350. Um, o, which is the O is, means it's from Olympus. So I can use through the lens flash if I want to, or TGL flash, but I've got it on manual at 32, 132 a second, 164, 128, and it will keep up with that bang, 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 which I'll show you. Um, it's brilliant, so this just holds over the lens, okay, and that just adds a bit more diffusion to the whole thing. Um, again, it slips. I think what I'm gonna need to do is what most macro photographers have got, is a kind of a system that sits on the flash gun uh, and it's got kind of a curl so you may have seen them there's different versions i didn't really want to spend that until i got into a bit of macro photography to see how it went but i've really enjoyed using this it's fantastic and the other thing this does is something called live composites and i don't know of another manufacturer that does this so what happens is you Set the exposure, so at the moment, f11, two seconds. Take a picture, it will take a noise reduction picture, it will do a base photo, we made you Photoshop with the layers. And then you just leave it open and you can watch the composite appear. And it will only include things that are of the same brightness. So in normal cameras, you leave the exposure, or leave the shutter open, it will gradually burn out the highlights and it will be a waste of time. Now you can, with the Nikon, take a series of pictures, blend them together in Photoshop. Definitely possible to do that. But the difference with the Olympus is that you can actually see it building on the screen, which is quite amazing. So you can decide when to stop it. A really, really great feature. Um, as I said, I don't know any other manufacturer that does it, and it's absolutely amazing. So what it's great for is light painting, or those long exposure fine art photographs, or, and this is what I've come here tonight for, I'm in my chroma, or for fireworks, because you can just leave it open, go and have a cup of tea, and then when you've had enough fireworks on your photograph just press the shutter and it turns it off and you get the actual raw file as one fold one file absolutely amazing feature I'll talk you through this when it's firework time which isn't quite yet so with live composite I could actually start the exposure now I'm not going to because the fireworks aren't due for another half an hour but I could do with an Z7 those bright highlights there would burn out very quickly but with the Olympus that is as bright as they'll get I really really like and I can see it happening on the screen
I'm going to wait half an hour, and then I'll show you what we're doing. If I can, I think it should be alright, but there were some lights behind me. And actually also really good for lightning so there's another feature that I really enjoy I'm looking forward to doing some astro again when I'm in Lofoten in Norway there's chances of seeing the aurora and I think it's going to be brilliant for that it's important to say that for landscapes the Nikon is the way to go it's much much better than this but if you if you remember way back in the day Daly Thompson who did the decathlon for England or for Great Britain this is the, day, the camera equivalent of Daily Thompson. The Z7, the equivalent probably of Carl Lewis or a Sally Gunnell. It's very, very good at one specific genre, which is landscapes. And it's okay at the others, but for macro, I think it's met its match. This though is a great all-rounder. It's water resistant they say but actually if you go on top i'll try and find it and put it on here for you um, olympus did a test where they sprayed it with water for like an hour and it still works completely so it's absolutely bulletproof really rugged but then also not particularly heavy again this one with the built-in motor drive is but you can buy the smaller ones certainly the om1 or the om1 mark ii look like they're brilliant cameras and they may well be that i get my hands on one of those at some point um, other features that i really like i mean it's been so well thought out this camera everything on the menu is customizable um, this people say it's complicated but that's because there are so many choices that you can make to customize this to work the way you want it on the top we have four um, you see it there there's four c1 c2 c3 and c4 four custom dials which you can set up and i've got my c1 set for macro c2 for long exposures talk about that in a second c3 for landscapes and c4 for portraits now the long exposures that you can do on this there are built-in neutral density filters so you can go up to i think it's five stops maybe sit i'll put, I'll put it on the screen here for you um, of neutral density and because the stabilization and this has got seven and a half stops of stabilization you can pretty much hand hold long exposures which is absolutely incredible i have as well as buying the 60 mil lens i've got a 12 to 40 which is equivalent to 24 to 80 it might be 12 to 45 actually in which case it's 24 to 90 um, which again it's not a very big lens the lenses are smaller and therefore cheaper the whole system is therefore cheaper so you can buy more of them and this is also going to be perfect for wildlife photography because um, so a 300 millimeter lens on here is equivalent of 600 mil uh, which is great for wildlife and the autofocus is fantastic the lenses are brighter because the apertures are smaller so 2.8 most of the lenses the pro lenses are 2.8 um, which is great and to get my hands on a, a 600 mil 2.8 lens for the nikon it's going to cost something like six thousand pound so it's never going to happen by the way i bought this second hand because it's not the newest camera but i've used the mark ii version of these when it first came out and did a test against a, a fuji xt 2 really really liked it really was tempted by the system i was doing landscapes handheld and the results were fantastic the reason i went with the fuji system though was because the price was better i was buying a second hand fuji system and they had everything that i needed um, so this is almost <laughs> in full circle other things i like about the design of it apart from that it's rugged we've got lots of customizable so all of these buttons on the back you can customize um, but you can still change all of these round you can say flip the screen around which is really really useful you can 
custom make all these buttons do various things and there's almost two lots of those because of that function button up here um, on the top uh, you can see this very easily but we've got three buttons we've got um, the main shutter button we've got um, an exposure value button there an ISO button there um, and that one is checking to the right and that's the video button which also um, you can use to link things to a custom menu like the i menu on the on the nikon but if you look and we can see really closely but that iso button there it's got like a little knurled bit on the top some little bobs bobbly bits as and that's a different height so that's been thought about so that when you're doing this and your your eyes behind the camera you can feel which one of those you need. So I know even now that that's the ISO button because I can feel it. That's really clever, really well thought out. I love all of that. Um, it takes two batteries, the charge goes on forever. Again, because it's such a small camera, uh, I really like it. We've got a button on the, we've got the nail button on the back, like the Nikon, on one at the front, which works really well. And the same kind of buttons, look, the same one there and the same one there. So if I'm holding it this way, it's just so clever. If you're a press photographer or a sports photographer, this system is fantastic and really, really great. And I think it's going to be useful for me to expand my photography into other genres, uh, as well as being a good landscape backup. Let's talk about landscapes and maybe the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room is the sensor size. This is a micro four thirds system, very small sensor, 20 megapixels, full frame sensor, 45 point something. Um, and for landscapes, what I'm looking for is quality and the quality out of there is going to be better than that. Dynamic range is going to be better out of there than it had when it will be on there. And I changed from the Fuji system, the CSC system, which is 24 megapixels because of the dynamic range. Um, and I've ended up here with this full frame Nikon. So a landscape photography, for landscape photography, I think this is gonna be better. However, there are, let's put that down carefully there. There are a couple of things that this does to try and um, counter that. First thing, you can do with this handheld high res shots, which are 50 megapixels. You can also, if you put it on a tripod and tell it it's on a tripod, it will do an 80 megapixel high res shot, which sounds good. Problem you've got is if there's any movement in front of you. So not gonna be quite as good as a Nikon. Um, but what I'm thinking, We've got super resolution now on the on Photoshop. We've got all sorts of software that will improve the noise and the noise isn't too bad, but we can up the resolution. Do we really need that resolution? I remember shooting this picture, um, which ended up in uh, the Landscape Photographer of the Year Award book and on display in an exhibition. And that was shot on a 20 megapixel camera. Is that something we're getting too hung up on? I do shoot, as you know, a lots of 65, 24 crops, and I do crop down on that 45 megapixel sensor, but I could do a high res shot and crop this. So what I'm gonna do is next week, we'll do some macro, and I'll talk you through my technique. I'm gonna try photograph some damselflies. I'm not sure how good I'm gonna be, but that's gonna be the plan. And then the week after, what I'm planning to do is to take both this camera and this camera to the beach and we're going to do a sunrise maybe at chroma pier and i'll put them on a tripod and we'll try and match up the focal lengths and we'll do the best shot i can get out of this and the best shot i can get out of this as long as as well as the 20 megapixel standard shot out of this and we'll have a little look and see what we think because it's possible I'm not sure it's that possible but it's possible that I might switch systems again because I really really love that I think if you take a bit of time to learn how to use it they're a wonderful system and I had an OM10 back in the day and an OM2 
and absolutely loved using them. So we'll see, but uh, stay tuned for that. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, just click the button because that will mean that you'll be able to find out what I think about that. So next week, some macro with the Olympus. Looking forward to doing that. And the week after that, some sunrise shots from the beach, probably at Coma. So until then, take care. Thanks for tuning in. Goodbye.